Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Uh, our topic now is about how to refute Christians about Islam. You know, the Muslims, they make uh, a lot of uh, uh, smoke, and they have tons of articles to teach the Muslims how to refute the Christians. But none of the refutation the Muslims they provide to us is really can be called even close to be a refutation. What I can call it is just a plane with the, I mean, I don't know, they are wasting time saying nothing, talking about nothing, proving nothing. It's all about nothing. And here we will see an, an, like, uh, an example of what is called refutation of, uh, for the Christians. Refuting the evidence for Christianity. Okay. How a Muslim can refute Christianity? The section deals primarily with refuting the main argument that Christians put forth for the for the Bible being the word of God and also provide argument that further proves that the Christianity is false religion. Great scholarly research. If, if, if this is guys, this is a great scholarly research. All right. So if we go and read what is called the great uh, scholarly research, we will find that the Muslim who they are called the scholars, they can't even explain a verse in the Quran, but yet they can explain to you your Bible. Refuting argument about pro from prophecy, from prophecy. We click. Refuting alleged Old Testament prophecies pointing to Jesus. Uh, Ms. Kalonis article refuting argument from prophecy. So a Muslim now, he want to refute you that the Old Testament is not prophesying about Jesus. Okay, let's get, just take a look. We will take a peek, peek about this, uh, this website. Uh, just in case you are a Christian and you are thinking yourself, well, uh -huh, uh, then that's mean the Jews are justified in rejection or in rejecting Islam since they knew that Muhammad is not predicted in the Torah. Well, actually, that is not the case since we don't hold the Old Testament that is possessed today in the hands of the Jews of the and the Christians as authoritative. But we believe that the Prophet Muhammad was predicted in the Torah, revealed to Moses, peace upon him. Do you see how they want to refute you? They want to refute you by saying that the Torah predicted Muhammad. Hmm. Okay. You know, I, I don't want to waste my time and the time of everybody about this garbage. If you're a prophet is a prophet, why you need even the Old Testament and New Testament, which is supposedly rejected by you Muslims? Why Muslims cannot provide us evidence that Muhammad is a prophet from his own work? I mean, isn't it every prophet is independent which means god he provide him and aim him and arm him with his own evidence why islam need christianity and need Muhammad, we need uh, Moses and need judaism and if this is really what needed to prove muhammad to be a prophet why allah the stupid allah did not preserve what the muslims call the corrupt bible you see i have books my books is in amazon you can get your your copy it is my responsibility if somebody want to corrupt my books to sue him, took him to court and even took him to jail and make him pay a lot of money for corrupting my books. How about God who is eternal? He sent books, but he cannot preserve them. This is what the Muslims they say to you about their God. So from here we know that Islam is a stupid religion based on a fake prophet and fake prophecies because the Quran says that nobody can exchange or change the words of Allah. Nobody. It's what the Quran says. If we go in the Quran here, we search, we will find the following. Read with me carefully, please. And this is a verse contain all this all the prophets before Muhammad, including Muhammad, which means it's not about the Quran. Chapter 6, verse number 34. Chapter 6, verse number 34. Translation, please. You can read any stupid translation there. You will see it says the following. Rejected were messengers before thee with patience and uh, constancy, 
and they pour their rejections on their wrongs until our aid did reach them. There is none that can alter the words of God or the word, the words of Allah. So nobody can alter the word of Allah. Is the Bible the word of Allah? Yes. Is the Torah is the word of Allah? Yes, according to Muslims. So how come Allah is speaking about all messengers before Muhammad and they speak about Muhammad and then he says nobody can alter the word of Allah and then the stupid Muslim he says to us that the Bible is corrupt when they claim that the Bible is the word of Allah. I find that Islam is, is, uh, is, uh, is filled with stupidity. Imagine the Muslim they believe that Allah he sent 124,000 prophet all their books is corrupt except the Quran. So here you notice that the guy who cannot prove himself that he is a graduated from the school of the prophets if we can say so so he have fabricated document says oh all the prophet before me their books is corrupt and what is the purpose of saying their book is corrupt because his name is not there because nobody predicted him and you will notice muhammad he never mentioned go and read the song of songs speaking about me you see the muslim they make article says uh, or did that you know muhammadim muhammad muhammadim did that himself he was making fun of the song of songs saying that this is a porn book porn go and see how many videos saying that then suddenly an idiot he said to him well do you know that in the quran in the in the hebrew it says muhammadim and madam madam dam 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 and since then, did that stop saying the Song of Songs is a book of porn? Suddenly, it became a book of holiness because he, he found that Muhammadim, but Muhammadim have nothing to do with the with, with the name, you know, in, in the in the Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew and the Arabic are born out of the Aramaic, and they use the same word. Like the Muslim, they pray, they say Amin. We say Amin. Why? Because this is a story from the Aramaic. Both languages are using the Aramaic. 90% uh, uh, of both languages is coming from the Aramaic and there is other mix coming from that other cultures like you know uh, Assyrian language uh, which is uh, uh, most of our Aramaic too but they have their own words uh, Egyptian words because because you know that the, the Jews they uh, been uh, captured by the Egyptian is enslaved by the Egyptian for a while so there's many words is taken from here and there and is used in both languages now when the Muslims they try to refute what is called a prophecy about Jesus what they gain from this what, what, what they, why they want Jesus to not to be prophesy about what the purpose of this if Islam approved Muhammad approved Jesus to be a prophet as the Muslim they call him Isa so why they are writing article to say well, the Torah did not protect Jesus, the Torah protect Muhammad. Doesn't sound weird? How you say to us that you accepted Jesus as a prophet, but now you try to pervert or to divert what the meaning of, of the words mean about Jesus to be about Muhammad. What is the purpose of this? The purpose is very simple. Muhammad cannot approve himself. Muslim cannot find evidence of Muhammad to be a prophet. If we say to a Muslim, name for me one prophecy about Muhammad. I will show you something Muhammad he said. If we go, uh, if we go in, let us see. Uh, if we go here. Uh, in the sunnah.com. If we look here, we will find Muhammad as an example speak about the Turkish. The Turkish. Let us see. I'm just trying to make it clear for you. see if we can find it read with me carefully as an example 
Muhammad is speaking about the Turkish that the Muslims they will fight the Turkish Muhammad never speak about the Muslims as being Turkish the Turkish are the enemies of Islam the last hour would not come until the Muslims fight the Turk people whose faces was like hammered shield wearing clothed of hair and walking <coughs> with shoes of hair so Muhammad claimed that the Turkish are the enemies of Islam and they will never convert to Islam and the Muslims are the enemies of the Turkish. He never speak, as you see here, the judgment day will not come. It's a sign of the judgment day. It's a sign of the judgment day. So the sign of the judgment day is the Turkish will attack you and you will go in war with them. And he described how they are and he's making fun of their faces. But obviously Muhammad, he do not know that Turkish will become Muslims. Same time, Muhammad, he predicted that the Constantinia is going to be invaded by the Muslims, but not by the Turkish. He speak about people of the Arabian Peninsula attacking the Constantinia. Let us see if we can find the hadith here. This is some of the prophecies of Muhammad. Let us see here. The consequence of or, uh, or the conquer of the Constantinia is a sign of the judgment day, but this has happened a long time ago and no judgment day happened. Uh, Look at this. Even there, if there is was one day left in this world, Allah would make the last until uh, uh, the uh, in last until a man from my household took the position of the mountain of the Lamb, which is in Constantinia. So Muhammad claimed that his from his family somebody will conquer the Constantinia, but this not happened by Muhammad or his family. What happened? It happened by the Turkish, and all of us we knew that it's not a secret. And Muhammad, he considered the Turkish are the enemies of Islam. And then look here what he says, Muhammad. The Messenger of Allah, let us, let us click at the hadith and see it in, in a bigger space. The Messenger of Allah said, the hour will not begin until close, uh, uh, closest Muslim outpost uh, with the Mula, blah, 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 and say the Allah, Ali, Ali, etc. And uh, okay. And then what will happen? Read with me carefully. He said, you will fight Banu Asfar, the, the, the children of the yellow. This is how he called them, the Roman. And those who come after you will fight them until the best of the Muslims go out and fight them. The people of Hijaz who will not fear the blame of for anyone for the sake of Allah, they will conquer the Constantinia. The people of Hijaz, the Arab. <laughs> It's obviously is a false prophecy. He's a false prophet. How you say that the people who they are Arab from Hijaz? The Hijaz is a very small area in the Arabian Peninsula. It's not only all the Arab, it's a small tiny location of the Arabia called Al Hijaz. You can go and search it. So the people of Hijaz is the one who will conquer us Constantinia. So how Muhammad he says such a thing and he claimed to be a prophet. Everything Muhammad he said in his books proving to us that he is not a prophet We do not need to be uh, studying hard and be genius to know this is gonna be a prophet of God Obviously, this is a lie What did the Arab conquer Constantinia? No is the Arab now ruling Constantinia? No is somebody from a Hijaz attack Constantinia and took over it? No uh, is, is the people of Hijaz is now controlling? No. So it's a lie. This guy, he was saying, making the promises, some come true, some will not come true. And even what come true is not done by him. So like here, Constantinia, yes, is conquered and conquered by Muslims, but not by people of Hijaz, by the Turkish, which is the enemies of Islam, according to Muslims. So here he have a double lie. The Turkish, who they are going to fight the Muslims, and they are the enemies of Islam and Muhammad make fun of them because they look funny for him because he's a racist 
And then he says he claimed that the one who will conquer Constantinia is the Muslims, who they are Arab from Hijaz. So if we go back, if we go back to the Quran, we will find Muhammad saying as an example, another false prophecy. All of us, we heard the Muslims speaking about the splitting of the moon. Splitting the moon, okay. Muhammad said that the moon, the, the judgment day is near and the moon is split. But did the moon split really? We will let that for later. But what about the judgment day? This is a false prophecy, chapter 54, verse number one. The judgment day is almost there, more than near. You see, Danat is or is the same as saying like almost there in the corner. So Muhammad, he claimed that this is a sign of the start of the judgment day. The hour of judgment is night and the moon is a cliff ascender. So Muhammad claimed here that God told him that this is a sign of a judgment day and it's already started. Read it carefully with me. And this is 1400 years ago. Now, is it accepted to accept that the moon is split according to Muslims and this is a sign of judgment day and then Allah changed his mind? That's stupid. That's mean Allah, he gave a false warning about false judgment day, about false date. Allah, uh, he, if uh, Muhammad is the same as Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, every few years, they have a new judgment day. And many of those fool, foolish men and women, they, they follow them. They sell their uh, baloney and clothes and etc. and the property because like if February 1973 and 17, whatever, is going to be judgment day. So all the dumb ones, stupid ones, they sell their property and they prepare themselves for the judgment day. Muhammad, he was taking, collecting the money of the Muslims, asking them to give him donations, give it charity so he can be saved. And he promised them that judgment day is near. But judgment, they never happened. And this was 1400 years ago. Everything in the Quran, in the Hadith, proven Muhammad to be a false prophet. So why the Muslims he need to find Muhammad in the Bible if he cannot find us Muhammad in the Quran? Where is the prophet Muhammad in the Quran? Where is the prophecy of Muhammad in the Quran? If you remember a few years ago, weeks ago, I was talking to a Muslim and I asked him, uh, give me a prophecy of Muhammad. He said he doesn't have, he does not need to have one. Have you ever heard of somebody who is a prophet, but you do not need to have a prophecy? How you can be a prophet without prophecy? Then we go here, we will find more evidence of Muhammad being stupid and he cannot be a prophet. But I want to go back to the topic here where the Muslims trying hard to refute the Christians. How they refute the Christians? Christianity. General article on Christianity, refuting the evidence of Christianity, refuting the Trinity, 46 articles. You see, when a Muslim, he tried to refute the Trinity, he is trying to accomplish what, supposedly, that he is right and we are wrong? Let me make it simple for you. Let us say there is a religion, they have 70 gods. There is a religion exists, let us say, assume, they have 70 gods. And we Christians, we have one God. And the Muslims, they have one God. And uh, the one who worships Satan, they have one God. Because there is people who worship Satan and he is the only God for them. So what that will make a difference? Nothing. What if those, what if those who have 70 gods, they are the one who have the true religion? And there is truly, there are 70 gods. You know what I mean? This is stupid. Believing in one God or two or three will not make a difference. But make a difference is if this is a true that they are God or not. The number of the gods is a stupid idea to make it as a reason to believe that you are taking the right side. People who believe in the devil as God, oh, they have one God. His name is the devil. Nice to meet you. Does that mean if you believe in one God, they are right? So here there's a stupid, you know, like let us say a, a, a way of thinking, trying because they, they are bankrupt. They have nothing. Same time, if the Muslim, they say to us that Allah is one. Well, there is tons of evidence about in the Quran. It says Allah cannot be one. And we can show you tons of them. As an example, if we go here. The Quran says that if Allah, he want to have a partner, he will take it from his kind. 
Okay, well, Allah will take a partner from his kind. You see, the Muslim they say to you that Allah, when the Quran says, like Allah says, we and this is uh, like the same as kings they speak. Uh, this is stupid. They are saying to me that Allah is copying the language of kings, so he speak like kings. So he is not we, but he is one. But he say we, just because he like to abrogate himself to we. So he's one, but he say we. Ah, okay. But here there's no we. Chapter twenty one, verse number seventeen. It says it clearly that if Allah he want to take partners, he will take partners from his kind. From his kind, what is his kind? Look at the Muslim translation. It says. If we have, we, we should surely have taken it from, if we take partner, and here, by the way, lahu, he said past time. Do you know what lahu mean? Lahu mean, lahu in the Arabic language mean a woman. Today, in the language you're speaking today, it's mean fun. But in the Arabic language, the real meaning is women. So Allah is saying, if we want to take a woman as a partner, we will take it from ourselves, not nearest to ours, to ours. What nearest to us? There's women are nearest to Allah? <laughs> That's funny. So he says it from ourselves. And what does that mean? How Allah have women and they are from ourselves? There's no Muslim can answer. Because this is can be really, uh, this is really crazy. This is stupid. Look at the translation here. We found it in our presence. What our presence? Allah will take partners from our presence. It doesn't say that. It says from the dunna. The dunna is a very clear word about what it's mean. If we go to at tafsir.com. Let me do this. Hold on, please. If we go to at tafsir.com, let me get the, uh, the page. Altafsir.com. <clears throat> okay, I will put the screen for you in a second, please. Hold on. I have a small, tiny screen computer, so uh, I'm trying to work with it. All right, I think we are back now. All right. Uh, if we go to attafsir.com, read carefully with me. Then Allah revealed the following that they said that the angels are Allah daughters. If we have wished to have a pastime, we wish to have a daughters, and it says it's mean if we wish to have a wife, and also it's mean if we wish to have a children, we could found it in our presence. But it doesn't say that. Let us go and see the 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 Ibn Kathir, the uh, Hold on. Read carefully, please, with me. Had we desire some diversion that provide diversion in the way of partner or child, we should have found it, should found it with ourselves. Okay. Allah will find a partner from ourselves. This is what the dunna mean. This is the correct translation, ourself. So Allah will take partners from ourselves. How Allah can be one, and then he says ourself. You see, when we say ourself, it's mean there's many of us from the same kind. Like we are maybe a clan, or we are a species, or like all of us, we are elephants. All of us, we are birds. All of us, otherwise, you say ourself and you are the only person who exists like you, that is stupid. I remember he is talking about taking a partner, and this partner is going to be a wife, and then she will provide him babies. How did it happen? So the Muslim, they spend a lot of time trying to provide you false evidence that Christianity give you false trinity. Trinity does not exist. 
the fact everything in life is about Trinity. How Islam came to exist? Muhammad, Jibreel, Allah. That's it. That's it. Okay. Mary, she was, she got a bread net. What Allah said to her, fast three days. Zechariah, the same. This is in the Quran. If a woman, she is divorced, she have to stay three period. If a Muslim want to blow his nose, want to do ablution, he have to do it three times. Muhammad, when he started the prayer, he said takbir three times. Everything in Islam is based three times. Everything is based on number three. Allah speak about himself in every chapter. He say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Well, why three? The names of Allah are 30, uh, uh, 99, which is multiply of the age of Jesus. In the name of Allah, the word Bism here, and by the way, is written wrongly. The word Bism is not written like this. There's an Alif here is missing after the Ba. Allah, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim. So you are trying your best to fight the Trinity, but you cannot explain to us the Trinity in the Quran. Why Allah he produced himself to you in three names? I mean, what, what, what's up with the three names? What is the problem? Can't Allah say is he, my name is Allah and that's it? Why always Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim? Obviously, Muhammad trying to replace Christianity. Allah is the Father, Ar-Rahman is going to be the Son, and Ar-Rahim is the Holy Spirit. What is that? Even the word Qira'a is a word starting from the Bible, from the Christians. The Aramaic Christians, before they start a prayer, and this is I see in every day in my church, they say Qira'a min al Injil al Muqaddas, Qira'a. Muhammad, he called his book Qira'a, Quran, Qira'a. And Muhammad, when he tried to provide us himself as a prophet, he claimed that there's an angel who came to him, and this angel, he asked him to read. What is reading? Iqra, Qira'a, an Aramaic word, mean read. But how Muhammad can read if he cannot read according to Muslims and the angel did not give him a book to read? That additional stupid story from Muhammad, because he's trying to copy what the Christians believe in, trying to create a religion, if you go in the Quran, you will see how silly this religion is. That's an example. In this chapter in front of us, which is in the beginning of the Quran, all right? Uh, chapter 2, verse number 173. Uh, chapter uh, three, uh, 5, verse number 3. It says, speak about the same thing. The Quran keep repeating the same thing. It's a, the most boring, stupid book. The same verse, you will find it all over the place. But let us read together and see how stupid with me. I'm not insulting, by the way. It's just stupid. Forbidding for you the food or dead meat, etc. Muhammad, he tried to establish a religion. He looked in the Torah, the, 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 the Jews, they have forbidden food. Muhammad don't have it until now. So he have to copy what the Jews have. So he put it there. And then look what he did. The Jews forbid meat, which is etc. etc. in certain way, slaughter in certain way. That the pigs the, the, is forbidden for the Jews to eat. So Muhammad is copying from them. He's trying to make a new Torah. And then because he's an idiot and the followers are idiots, look what he said. Today, this day, I perfected your religion for you, completed my fear of, upon you, and have it chosen for you Islam as religion. Today, why? Just because you told them the pigs is haram. This is the perfection of religion, is to, to give us the menu of the dish. Have you ever heard of somebody saying to, to his followers that, okay, you don't, you, you eat yogurt, you eat garlic, and it's not halal for you to eat pork, and today I perfected the religion for you. This is stupid. This is the most stupid statement ever. Today is perfected like what, where, how? Remember, this is in the beginning of the Quran. Why today is perfected? And then Muhammad, he, you know, he contradicted himself. 
when he was dying in the bed of death he asked his followers to bring him a papers because he want to write for them a book and this book if you follow it you will never misguided after that if we go in the Quran we will find the following for the hadith Let us see if we can get it. All right. So remember, the Quran says today, I perfected the religion for you. So Islam became perfect. The Quran says that. And then Muhammad, in the, in the stage of death, look what this idiot he said. He said, uh, Read carefully. Ibn Abbas said when the Messenger of Allah was in his dead, uh, uh, deathbed and there was some men in the house, he said, come, come near. I will write for you something after which you will not go astray. What? Now you, wanna, you are dying and you will write for us something we will not go astray? So what the Quran was for? And what this verse, chapter 5, verse number 3, saying that today I completed Islam for you. So Islam is not completed. This is a lie. So what you want to write for us? Some of them, the Muslim, they said, that his companions said, Allah Messenger is seriously ill. The Muslims accuse Muhammad to be stupid now. He's, he's, he lost his mind. And they said, you have the Holy Quran. They said to themselves, like, what this idiot is saying, so what the Quran is about? So all the Quran is used is less because he said here, let me write something to you. You will never go astray after it. So the Quran is useless. And then Umar al-Khattab, he made fun of him. He said, Qad hajar al -rasul, which means Muhammad, he lost his mind. The messenger, he lost his mind. And this is why they are translating here, saying to you, he's seriously ill. It doesn't say that. It says he, he lost his mind. He's being stupid. You have the Holy Quran. Allah book is, is sufficient for us. The Allah book is enough. What Muhammad is saying. So what this the whole Quran is about, and he's saying he's a prophet, and Allah guide me, and Jibreel is coming, and etc. Blah 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 blah. And now you are saying to me, you will write a paper, and that paper or a few papers, they will keep us from going astray. So it was not even convincing to the Abdul who followed Muhammad. So the people in the house differed and started disputing. So they start argument about give him paper, don't give him paper, give him paper. Some of them said, give him writing material so he may write to you something after you will, you, you will not go astray. And here you will notice that Muhammad is saying, give me something to write for you. So Muhammad, obviously, he knows how to write. But the stupid Muslims, until now, they, they, they keep insisting that Muhammad do not know how to write, how to read. And then the Muslims are fighting over this issue. And Muhammad, he gets upset and he don't want to write anymore. And obviously he died. So Muhammad, when he decided to write for them something, if they follow, they will not go astray. Was he guided by Allah? The Muslim, they will say yes. If yes, why Allah chose the wrong time? Cannot he do it the way they before, before he die? I mean, he's dying now, he's dead. They finished the argument, Muhammad is dead. He lived for 60 years and he could not, Allah could not forget, remember to make the, the most important writing which will not make you go astray. So the Muslim who spent tens of hours trying to explain prophecies about Jesus in the Bible, a book he don't understand, a book he don't believe in, why he can't explain to us what's happening? False prophet, false prophecy, false religion, and all of it is based on the Trinity. Allah the Rahman, the Rahim, Allah, the 99 names, the evolution of the three. If we type the word three in the Quran, what we will find? You will not believe it. Everything in the Quran is about number three. Even Jesus about number three. Who is Jesus? Jesus in, in Islam is a man, is the word of God, is the spirit of God. He's a three in the same time. If we type the word three in the Quran, what we will find? Read with me carefully. 
just you know you can do it yourself go and do it in English you will find the word in the number three appear everywhere here we go this is chapter 2 verse number 2 to 8 if women she get divorced she have to be uh, to stay away from marriage or sex for three um, uh, months why uh, three because this is the perfection number they want to be sure that she is not a Briton uh, and he said oh, oh God uh, made for me uh, a sign like what is the sign that I will what you promised me I will uh, I will happen so Allah said to him okay you know what you will not speak for three days I will make you mute he said oh Lord how shall I have a son seeing I am very old and my wife is is, is uh, you know cannot have children you know and then he said oh my Lord give me a sign then the sign was the answer shall be that shall not speak for three days now, why three days so Mary she did not speak for three days Jesus lived 33 years old according to Islam too uh, Jesus was the Word of God the Spirit of God and the man of God uh, Islam based on Jibreel Muhammad Allah I mean, I don't know, everything is around you is based on three. If we continue, the whole book is about number three. If 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 the if the believers they need help and aid in war, Allah will send them what? Allah will send them three thousand angels. I mean, why three thousand? What about make them seven? Like do three thousand. What about sending us one 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 thousand? You know, why three thousand angels? What is unique about number three? Even the angels are three thousands. So you will find the number three all over the Allah. He gave Muslims order to pray three times, not five times. You see, you will not find in the whole Quran any order that you pray five times. It's three times. Uh, 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 this chapter here in front of us is speaking about Jesus saying, Say it, no Trinity, but yet the same Quran says the Trinity is true. The same verse. Chapter 4, verse number 171. The same verse says, you Christian, don't say Trinity. You see it? Don't say Trinity. But then in the same time he says, Jesus Christ is a messenger, a word of God, and a spirit of, of proceeding from God. This is a tree. You are saying to me, don't say tree. And now you are saying to me that Jesus is a three in one. I mean, how stupid are you, the one who wrote the Quran? How you say to me that there's no Trinity, and you say to me that Jesus is man, Jesus is the Word of God, and Jesus is the Spirit proceeding from God. Well, this is a three in one. So where is the one who will refute my Trinity? Stupidity is amazing. Do we have a Trinity or not? This is the Trinity. The man, the word, the spirit. Why Jesus is not for? What about we make him a man, a spirit, and word, and something else? So he's trying to explain to us who is Jesus, but he just proved to us that Jesus presents the Trinity. This is very stupid of Islam. Everything in this religion is a stupid. It's a it's a chain of contradiction. Muhammad, in the beginning of his life, he's trying to be a Jew. Then he tried to be a Christian. Rejected by the Jews, he killed the Jews. Rejected by the Christian, he want to kill the Christians. And even he didn't understand the Trinity. Chapter 5, verse number 73. Muhammad, he claimed that the Christians believe that Allah is a third of, of, of three. Right? But in different verse in the Quran, Muhammad says that the Christians believe that the Messiah is Allah, not third of three. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Let us see. Read carefully with me. Chapter 5, verse number 17. Those who say that the Messiah is Allah, they are kuffar. Okay. Is the Messiah, is Allah is a third of a three or the Messiah is Allah? Because there's a huge difference. 
you guys you understand what I'm saying if I say to you Christian Prince he claimed that he is Jibreel that's mean he is Jibreel he is not second person if you were saying that the, the Christians believe that Allah and Christ is the same person that means there's no second person there's one person but this verse here says that Allah is a third of a three so where is where is the Messiah who is Allah the third of a three the third of a three is not the same as the Trinity you see here the Buddha word Trinity it's not really accurate in Arabic it says the third of a three there's no Trinity the translation is false the third of a three so there's three they are not one and this is what the Quran is saying about the Christians but as this is absolutely false in different verse Allah he gave different meaning or Muhammad that the Christians believe that Allah himself is Jesus so where is the Trinity you are talking about do we have a Trinity there's a three person or we have one person who is Allah which is the Messiah stupid in different verse we will find that he is speaking about Mary he add Mary to the Trinity so Muhammad is obviously very confused about what we believe he have no idea and the Muslim try to find Muhammad to find a place for him you know when a Muslim he goes and he says I want to show you from the Old Testament prediction about Muhammad and then he says uh, I, I will raise a prophet from your brothers is Muhammad a brother of the Jews he will say to you that Muhammad is from Ishmael who is the stupid he said that to you how Muhammad can be from Ishmael according to Islamic books Ishmael he married from the tribe of Jerham oh, is Muhammad from Jerham those are the enemies of Quraysh stupid funny according to Muslim books uh, uh, Ishmael he did learn the the language or the Arabic language at the age of 11 how he can be the father of the Arab he learned from the Arab the language the Arab is ex exists before him so everything here is a stupid there's they are trying desperately to find a place for Muhammad and there's many naive Christians they help the Muslims to do that you will see many stupid teachers in our churches teach and sadly I have to say stupid that Muhammad is from Ishmael and the reason for Muslims and Muhammad to claim to be from Ishmael to have a kind of document to stand on like okay I'm from Abraham too I am from Abraham but if you go in the Quran you will see Muhammad he himself he made a stupid mistake in the whole Quran you will not see a verse saying that from the children of Ishmael there's a prophet it says the opposite that from the children of Jacob and Isaac there's a prophet the prophethood is from the children of Isaac and Jacob all right if you read me here let us see <clears throat> where is all right read carefully with me chapter 29 verse number 27 and this is the Muslim translation and we gave Abraham Isaac and Jacob okay hold on Allah where is I where is Ishmael what happened how he dropped Ishmael how the stupid God he dropped Ishmael you see remember Ishmael is the elder he is the oldest in the family how you can drop him at this moment Muhammad was speaking in front of the Jews trying to be hypocrite of the Jews he knew that the Jews don't care for Ishmael so he mentioned only the names they like Abraham and we gave Abraham Isaac and Jacob and ordained among his progeny the brother the prophethood but what progeny what 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 offspring Isaac and Jacob what is Ishmael even your Quran is against you does it say in the Quran that from the children of Ishmael there is we a prophet no it says Isaac and Jacob And why Isaac and Jacob? Why from the children of Abraham will be the prophets? 
Uh, nobody can explain to us. I mean, the, the whole universe is full of people. Why, why only Abraham? Um, Islam cannot explain. If you ask a Muslim, what even Jacob mean, he do not know. What, what, what is, what, uh, who is Isaac? What Isaac mean, they do not know. What Abraham mean? They don't know. Because all those are stolen names. They have nothing to do with them. There was a guy, he wrote in, wrote in, in a previous video, the one we made today, saying to me, oh, you obviously do not speak Aramaic, as if he speak Aramaic. He went and he copied some Aramaic text and he posted it in the, in, the, in the website, in the text. And he says that uh, uh, in, in Aramaic it says, Allahu, Allaha, you idiot, are you stupid or what? Allahu have nothing to do with Allah. A-L is the name, is not a name, is the word mean God. If you go, you see, there's many words in the Quran is used, which is coming from old religion. And this is exists in the Bible too, which mean old, I mean, old, old languages. As an example, if we say Baal, Baal, the Quran used the word Baal in many places. But what Baal mean? Baal is the name of the God of fertility. All right. Let us see. Let us uh, search for exact to save our time. Oh. This website is horrible. You know that they got Baal. What Baal? How it's written? You will find it says that God Baal. أَتَدْرُونَ بَعْلًا وَتَدْرُونَ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ And here there's another contradiction for the Trinity. Chapter 37, verse number 125. Are you going to worship Baal and forsake the best of the creators? You see creators. How Allah is the only God, but there's many creators. How you believe in one God, it, there is a creator. If there is a creator, this means there's gods. So how you forsake, you, you know, you, you go call upon Baal, Al, what Al? Al here is the word mean God. You see, Al is the word God in the ancient language. So which mean Israel was not Israel, it was Israel. Ishmael was not Ishmael, it was Ishmael, etc. So Al, A-L, is the word mean God. It's not the name of God. Same as Elohim, some Christian, some naive Christian says that our God, his name is Elohim. You must be an idiot. To believe that because even in the Bible Elohim come as a word or Elo is a word mean for God even the pagan God those who worship Elo who the fake God the false God so Elo or Eli is word mean God doesn't matter who what who's, which God is when you say uh, uh, my God that's your God and the pagan he can use the same word he says Eli too or he say Elo so Elohim is not a name in the in the ancient language, there's many words used for God and mix coming from the Egyptian, Aramaic, etc. Yeah is a word mean God. Yeah. A L E L, those are word mean gods. If we go to chapter 36 in the Quran, as an example, you will find that Allah his name is seen. Yeah, seen. Yeah, what yeah mean? The Muslims are confused about what this is mean. They don't. They are disconnected. Yeah, seen. You see it? Yeah, seen. What yeah mean? Yeah is a word mean God. Sin is the name of the God, which is the moon God. Search it. And look how smart the Muslims, as usual, they are trying to explain to you your book. But then a verse in the Quran, they say Allah knows best what this mean. Allah knows best. What Yasin mean? Yeah, because this is an Aramaic word. They stole it from the Aramaic. They have no idea what it's mean. Yasin. Yeah, I mean God. Sin is the name of God. In the language today, in English, you say, commit no sin. What sin? What does sin mean? It, it's mean it's pagan. When people, they start or stop worshiping the sin God, which is the moon God, and they became a Christians, so they start saying, this is sin, which means this is pagan. So the word sin or sin replace the meaning of sin. 
whatever the meaning it was in the in the old language in Latin or etc. So today, when you speak, you say, "Don't do sin." What does that mean? You say, "Don't be a pagan." This is a behavior of pagan, having you know uh, multiple wives, having changing your wives, having sex with the children, having sex with with the women who they are not your wives. This is sin. Why? Because this is what the pagan do. This is the sin religion. This is the moon god religion. And Allah, his name, is diverted from the name of the moon, the lunar. al la. It's not Elo or Ilah. It is al la. The word Al is a word mean God. The same as here, Ya, Sin. Ya is a word mean God. Sin is the name of the God. And it doesn't matter how much, how, how many times you explain to those people, still they have no idea what you are talking about. And they say to you, you do not know what are you talking about. And then you will find a Christian person saying to you, oh, the word Allah is used in the Christian churches in the Middle East. That's, that's true. It's used. But this is not because it is what right to be done. Those are under the occupation of Muslims for 1400 years. And they have no choice to use other words. You live under ISIS, what you expect? People leave the religion, people change religion in one day. All the fake Christians, they converted to Islam in one day when ISIS get in. Because either you convert or you die. So what name you will talk about? So here we need to remember, when the Muslim try to focus in silly stuff, that God is one, as if we Christian believe in three gods. We don't believe in three gods. We don't. So you try to refute us about if God is one or if uh, or you are refuting us about the Trinity because at the end of the day, the Trinity is about one God. Obviously, you are being stupid. Secondly, if Allah is one or three, who care? And we showed you many examples of the Quran proving that Allah cannot be believed or he himself, he don't believe is one, which is Muhammad. You see, when the Quran says, keep saying, it is he who created for you. It is he who created for, for you. How Allah he says it's he who is the one is talking? Who is the one is talking? Is the one is talking is Allah? Who alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jamian? It is he who created for you what is everything is exist in the earth. Okay, who is talking Allah? Allah says it is he. How that can be? You see, we understand the Muslim they say to us, Allah he speak about himself, he say we. Okay, now we is replaced by he, why? It is he, it is he who? He the edit of the village? How he can be he and he is we in the same time and why he don't say it is me? What's wrong with me? Like there's something wrong with me? Why he don't say it is me, I, Allah? I am your Lord who created for you. No, it is he. Why? Because the edit who wrote the Quran, he forget to switch between he and we and I. If you go a little bit down in the Quran, you will see here, that's the verse after it. It says, I will create for you an earth, somebody to inherit the earth or hold on. Why Allah here don't say, we will create for you. Why Allah keeps switching between I and we and it is he? For a very simple reason, because there's a guy, he is writing the Quran, fabricating the Quran, forgetting to switch between he and he and I, depending the story. So now the story need to use I, so he use I. The story need to say it is he, so he said it is he. The story need to say it's we, so we say it's we. So Allah is we and I and he. But yet we could not find who is Allah. And what make it more funny that Allah will create someone to inherit the earth. But to inherit the earth from who? This verse means that there is people who live in earth before Adam. But this is contradict of all of Islam. The reason for Muhammad to copy this verse because this is what the Sabian believe. For Muhammad was a Sabian for a certain time. Muhammad was... A Jew for a certain time, Muhammad was a false Christian, false called Jehovah's Witnesses, if we can say, for some time. So Muhammad changed his religion, changed his belief, depending on the time, depending on the people who was associating with. When Salman al-Farisi became a Sabian, 
Muhammad he became a Sabi and he, he observed a lot of information from Salman al farisi and now he is teaching the Sabi and teaching. So the evolution is a Sabi and the, the fast of Ramadan is Sabi and the five time prayer is a Sabi and 90% of things in the time Muhammad is a Sabi and suddenly then he switched. Suddenly Muhammad he wouldn't be a Jew. So he started fasting the Jew fasting. Then Muhammad he found that he have no you know he have no place with the Jews so we have to switch obviously it's not working the Jews are not believing Muhammad so he now he decided to switch different religion let us be Christians so suddenly he became a believer in Jesus and then Jesus he the one he want is not working out with the Christians the description everything about Jesus he come with it doesn't fit because he tried himself to find his, his name so he says to us oh hold on Jesus spoke about me. He said, there's a prophet after me will come. His name is Ahmad. And here we need to ask ourselves, why Muhammad, he says that his name is Ahmad. The Muslim, they would say to you, it's the same meaning. Okay, thank you very much. That's mean it is about a meaning. It's not about a name. So Muhammad is not his real name. Chapter 61, verse number six, translation of Yusuf Ali. And remember, Jesus, son of Mary said, what, what he said, okay. Oh, children of Israel, I am a messenger of Allah, sent to you confirming the law which come before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger will come after me whose name shall be Ahmad. Okay. Name, if the name of the prophet will be exist, should be Ahmad, not Muhammad. So why did that he found Muhammadim, not Ahmadim? Because he's an idiot. And if the name of Muhammad should be exist, should be exist in the gospel of Jesus, not in the Old Testament, because this is what the Quran is saying. So why we could not find Ahmad? So Allah, he was able to preserve Muhammadim. He could not preserve Ahmadim. That is a madness. And why the name of Muhammad became Ahmad? Why, why Jesus did not say, according to the Quran, that there's a prophet will come after me. His name is Muhammad. Why Ahmad? Because simply Ahmad is not a name. Ahmad is mean the praised one, the same as, as the same as uh, 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 the word Muhammad. Simply Muhammad is trying to replace Jesus. Jesus is the praised one. He is God on earth. Muhammad he claimed to be God on earth too, so he called himself Muhammad. And if you ask yourself, if you ask a Muslim, what the word Muhammad mean, he will say the praised one. If Muhammad is the praised one, who is the praised to? Allah. Allah is waiting for his turn to be praised. He's the second. So what do you mean Muhammad is the praised one? And why people want to praise Muhammad? He's a man. Do you Muslims praise man or praise God? The Muslim, they say to you, oh, we praise God. But Muhammad, his name is the praised one. <laughs> so obviously you praise Muhammad. And you will see the Muslims every time. They Every time they pray, they pray on Muhammad. Even Muhammad, he made a chapter in the Quran verses speaking and ordering the Muslims to pray on him okay, why Allah and the angels Allah and the angels and the Muslims are praying on the Prophet nobody can tell us in Allah Allah is the center of the universe Allah, angels, believers, all they are praying in one man. His name is Muhammad. The Muslim, they fabri fabricate the translation. They say the word Yusalli here does not mean pray. But all of us, we know that the word Salah means prayer. Yusalli is a verb, continuous verb. I-N-G, praying. So Allah and the angels praying on the Prophet. Oh, believers who do believe, pray on him and salute him. The whole world they have to pray on Muhammad and salute him. What is the need of this prayer? Is Muhammad granted heaven or not? Obviously, he's not. And why Allah saying Allah and the angels pray on Muhammad? Why Allah don't say I and the angels? How Allah he says Allah? Is it stupid? Imagine I'm speaking to you. Says a Christian prince. I agree with this. We are a Christian prince, right? This is stupid. Allah and his angels. Send the blessing on the prophet. This is the Muslim translation. So they replace the word praying on sending blessing. But how Allah can say Allah and his messengers if Allah is the one is talking? 
and what it does mean to send a blessing I mean isn't it enough to be blessed by Allah what is the need of the rest who need the angels anyway who need the believers anyway if Allah is God and he is the only God and he blessed me blessing come from God not from the rest the rest is, is a shish kebab you see when you say to somebody bless you simply you are not blessing him you are asking God to bless him it's a short word short sentence to make it short to say bless you but the fact you are saying may the Lord bless you for all a blessing coming from God so here look how stupid this is translation is Muslim trying to cover the truth that Allah and the angels and the, the message and the people and the Muslims all the world they focus in one God his name is Muhammad what they do Allah and angels and Muslims they are praying on Muhammad and at the end of the prayer they salute him with respect are you kidding me saying to me that Allah here salute Muhammad and respect him I want to see that in video so Allah angels Muslims every day for the rest of their life they are being ordered to pray and salute Muhammad isn't it this is the madness you Muslims worship Muhammad you don't worship God the God does not exist in your religion according to Islam if somebody insult the Prophet he must be killed if somebody insult Allah he been given he will be given three days to repent there's no repentance for insulting Muhammad but if you insult Allah you will be given three days to repent and come back to Islam so who is the God Allah he says something in the Quran Muhammad he says something in the hadith which one the Muslims they follow the hadith you know the funny the Muslim they say to us that anything in the hadith contradict the Quran we Muslim don't accept it that is a big fat lie everything in the Quran is not you don't follow anything in the Quran everything you follow is in the hadith it's not in the Quran as an example you Muslims you pray five times the Quran say pray three times. So why you pray five times? Because the Hadith says so. You Muslims, you pray in a certain way as Muhammad he said, not as Allah said. You Muslims, you practice things is not exist in the Quran. As an example, muta. If I do muta, if I do muta now, I am not allowed to do muta according to the Hadith, but according to the Quran, I'm allowed to do muta. Ask any Muslim, can we do muta? He will say no. Okay, where well, we can find the muta forbidden in the Quran? nowhere so how you say to us that anything contradict the Quran we don't follow it well here we go the muta as an example do you follow the muta or you don't follow the muta no we don't follow the muta why because Muhammad said so read with me that this verse sent down about seeking women by paying them wages sexual intercourse by giving money to women and this is later very forbidden this is about the muta later was forbidden all right so in the beginning we do practice that then it was forbidden forbidden by who by muhammad there's not a single verse in the quran says that this is forbidden so what we will do now we follow quran or we follow for the hadith obviously we follow the hadith because the hadith is more important than the quran the quran at the end of the day is a hadith and it is a fabrication of Muhammad and everything is said there is coming from a man no witness no proof of him what kind of a prophet he approve muta for those who do not know what muta it says in the front of you it's about seeking women for sex so you go to a woman you say hey honey you meet her in the elevator huh? your elevator is so small and so tiny and she is so close to you and you say to her how much you charge me if I sleep with you, she will say to you, I will give you, uh, you know, I will give, like, I will charge you five dollars and a few corn. Then you made an agreement for one hour, you have sex together, and then when the one hour is over, supposedly this is marriage, huh? It's called temporarily marriage. I mean, what is a perverted prophet this prophet is? Pay for sex for temporary time just for the joy of sex. And then Muhammad, when he was exposed between the, the Christian and the Jews, start laughing at him for practicing such a behavior. Muhammad, he came with an idea, okay, it's time to be abrogated. Look what, read with me carefully. You should seek women with your money, agreed for a period of time, for muta, but the lawfulness of this practice was later abrogated. How you can abrogate? 
Okay, where is the verse of obligation in the Quran? We cannot find it. Where Allah, he says, don't do it anymore. We cannot find it. And why Allah approved it in the beginning anyway? What kind of God, he says, you can do it now. And later, Muhammad, he fixed Allah teaching. Muhammad, he found that Allah is a perverted God. So when Muslims, they try to insert Muhammad in the Bible, they have to find him a place, but he don't fit. As you see, he have a problem with ethic. Where in the Bible it says you can do muta? The Muslim, they make a story. They say, oh, in the Bible it says that Lut have sex with his daughters. So what? The Bible report sin and good and bad, what people did. It's not God who said to them, go and have sex, you idiot. If the Bible now report that there's a guy, his name is a Christian prince, and he was a stupid like Muhammad, doing something bad, so what? There's a huge difference between God saying do this and people doing that. So our Bible, and this is additional proof that the Bible is not corrupt because reporting stories as it is. So why the Christians, the Jews, I mean, the Jews and the Christians never been together to agree about anything. So how the Jews and the Christians both they make an agreement to corrupt the Torah? Tell me, explain to me. We and the Jews agreed together to sit together and corrupt the Torah. That's stupid. And Christianity, as an example, spread all over India, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Roma, everywhere. How you can corrupt a book and the people of the book is all over. So here we notice that the Muslims, when try to refute the Christians, they focus on a few silly stuff. As an example, that we have one God. Who cares if you have one God or ten? Your God is stupid. The God who said that women have a have 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 a sperm coming from the ribs cannot be God. So you have one God. You have ten gods. This is cannot be God. The God who says that man have a, have a sperm coming from the from backbone cannot be God. I don't care if you have one or ten. At least provide me with God. Say something makes sense. This is the God you believe is one God, and look what He says. He must be a donkey. He must be an idiot. He must be an, a, 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 you know, a mad person to say such a thing. So he try, they try to focus on silly stuff, and it's really silly to focus if God is one or two or three, because if it is one, it is one. If it is seven, it is seven. The number will not change anything. What will change if it's true or not? If we say inside this room there is seven couches, and you like to have only one couch, but that will not change the fact that there is seven. So the number will not make a difference. What will make a difference is the truth. How God can teach such a teaching? God, he will not say. This is the, the uh, a guy who works as a nurse. He will tell you there is no such a not nurse, not a doctor. There is a gushing fluid coming from between the, loin, the, the, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. Do you really believe in this garbage? Or the sperm of the man stay for a sperm for 40 days in the belly of the mother and 40 days as a flesh and 40 days as a bones and then he is going became so total is 120 days so they they focus in the most silly stuff to make you not to think about the stupidity of this book and obviously Books of Tafsir, which is interpretation, and books of Hadith is causing a big problem for the Muslims. And this is why these days they try to deny them. Because now they try to give a different meaning for the Quran, but they have a problem. How we can get rid of those scholars? How I can get rid of Ibn Abbas? Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, was exists in his time. And he said that, so what I will do now? It's like saying Peter said so. It's like saying Paul said so. It's like saying... Uh, 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 John said so. So what we would do? We kill John. We kill Peter. We kill Paul. This is what the Muslims they do. They get. They try to get rid of them, but they are there, and you cannot. It's too late. Erdogan, the president of Turkey, he hosted a conference in Turkey a few years ago, and the purpose of the conference is to filter all the hadith which is making the prophet look like the idiot of the village. But it doesn't work. The Muslims, in generally speaking, they refuse that because this is what their prophet said. Same time, remember, all the stories we have about Muhammad is already filtered. How many times you filter it? If you go and read Ibn Ishaq, you will see that it says in the beginning that he filter and he throw out all the stories which does not fit with the Prophet. So the guy, he decide, he is he became the judge. 
what fit what doesn't fit so already all the stories we have about Muhammad is filtered and now we have the Muslim trying to find their prophet in our book because they cannot find a prophet in their book they find an idiot a person who make chapters about his balls a chapter about insulting his own kill If you read this verse with me as an example, chapter 111, verse number 5. Read all the chapter. The whole chapter is very silly and very stupid. What do you read from this chapter? I changed the Muslim to tell me what, what kind of God he said this. A woman and the husband, they are the uncles of Muhammad and his wife. They make fun of Muhammad for he's a false prophet. So what Allah he says, perish the hand of the father of a flame. What the heck? Allah is Cursing the hand of a, uh, the guy of a flame. What does that mean? Allah speak like this. No profit for him and his wealth. Burn soon, he will be in fireplace in flame. His wife carry cracking wood as a fuel. Look, what the heck? This is this is God talking. It's like two women. They are fighting. They are neighbors, and they are fighting in the stairs. The, the first wife, she said to the second wife, oh, your husband is fat and he is short. And the other wife, she says, ah, okay. <laughs> Look at your husband. He has 10 of pimples on his face and his nose is big. And then the other one says, may Allah curse the hand of your husband. And you know what? All the big TV screen in your house will not help you. The hellfire is waiting for you. And the other one, she said to her, oh, okay. You know what? You soon, you will be carrying wood. You are like a slave. I mean, what is that talk about? This is God? This is a chapter in the Quran. So now the name of the uncle of Muhammad and his wife who used to make fun of Muhammad is written in the Quran for eternity and the Muslim, they are reading the stupid stories. And what we gain from this story? What is the benefit we have from this story? Nothing. And what kind of God? He started cursing like two females fighting and they can do nothing. It's like, you know, he have no knife in his hand. He have no gun in his hand. So what he do? He start cursing, saying words. May Allah curse you. May Allah kill you. May Allah take your wealth. Uh -huh. la, 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 la. You are going to end in high fire. Don't try. Don't try. Say goodbye. This is God. Or oh, what about the verse speaking about the penis of Muhammad that he's cut off? A guy, he made fun of Muhammad and Muhammad trying to defend himself. So Allah, he sent him. A message or a Quran saying to him that the one who who says to you that your penis is cut off, you cannot have kids, he is cut off. This is God. This is what is that? Or what about Muhammad? Uh, uh, Allah He sent him a message in the Quran to support him in the in the fight with his two wives. I'm trying to find the prophet in this in this in this guy. Where is the prophet? A guy having a fight with his wife. Chapter sixty six, verse number forty uh, four. Verse number four, uh, a guy having sick, uh, fighting with his wives because he's cheating. So Allah, he sent him a message, says that this is a message to the wives, message to the wives who they are two parties, two wives having two parties, Democrat and Republican. If you turn in, 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 in repentance to him, your heart is indeed is so inclined. But if you back each other against him, truly, truly Allah is his protector and Jibreel and every righteous one among those believers and furthermore the angels will back him up like what the heck it's a fight with two women need all of those I have two wives and now I'm going to need Allah and the believers and the angels and Jibreel and every believer in this earth 1.4 billion Muslims doing jihad against my two wives where they are five foot short at all this is God talking or this is a guy he cannot, he do not know what to do with his wives. So as usual, he used Allah to, to control. Even inside, the Muslim, they say to you, George Bernard Shaw, brother, he said that if a prophet Muhammad was exist in this time, he can solve all the problems in the world in five minutes while he's drinking his coffee. Muhammad, he could not even solve the problem with his wives. To the point he need the help of Allah and the angels. I mean, what kind of consulting, what kind of help the fire department, the FBI, the CIA, name for me one department of Allah is not involved in the fight between Muhammad and his wives. Is 
Is, is anybody left? Allah, Jibreel, the believers, the angels, all they will back up Muhammad in what? In a fight with him and his wives. And this is a prophet of God. If this is a prophet of God, who is the stupid then? With this, I want to say thank you guys for being with us. May the Lord bless you. And I apologize for the quality of the screen is not uh, the, as usual because as you know, I am traveling. Don't forget if you like to learn more about Islam to order my book from Amazon.com and you can or Amazon.de depend on your location. You can search for Christian Prince and you will find my books there. And if you are a Muslim and you feel like you want to debate me soon, I will be back. I hope so. And we will uh, start our Skype calls and we will receive calls from Muslims. But right now, uh, what I have is not capable of taking uh, opening many applications at the same time. So I want to say thank you. And I will try maybe a Sunday if I can do live broadcasting again. Until then, I say may the Lord bless. And as you see, uh, the proofs is mounted and it's hard to carry. Too many proving that Muhammad is extremely a false man who have nothing except using God for his benefit, sexual benefit, money benefit, and everything focused on him. Muhammad is the devil himself trying to make a human being bow down to him, pray for him, salute him, praise him. He changed his name from a man his name is Qatham to a man his name the praised one, taking the place of God. And then he claimed that he, he have a religion which worship one God and don't associate the man with God, but yet the Shahada of Islam is all about associating the name of Muhammad with the name of God. Allah is not a name of any God. The true name is al la which means God, la the moon God. Same as ya Sin, as we showed you in chapter 36, verse number one. That is the name of Allah. That is the true name of Allah. Ya Sin, which is God Sin. Ya is a word meaning God. And sin is the true name of the God of Islam. It's just another name of the moon God, which is Lah. Lah, sin, and many other names, all they present one God. Depend in the culture, depend in the location. In some places they call him sin. In some places they call him La. In some places they call him, you know, the different, different, different in the language. And Muhammad, he grabbed his information from everybody. And he wrote it in his book. And as you see in the front of you, you ask the Muslims what Yasin mean. Every Muslim give you a different interpretation. For this is cannot be a word of God, which cannot be explained. Allah knows best what He mean by those letters because they do not know what those letters mean. In different interpretation, they will say to you, Yasin is an Aramaic word, which is true. So now they knew it's Aramaic, but they don't know what the meaning is still. So some they say, oh, it's a human, or maybe it is, etc. Why? Because Islam is a stolen religion of a mixed religions from many cultures, many languages, and this is why Muslims today are disconnected. They can't explain anything, and all what they have is Allah knows best. And you know what? What kind of religion I'm going to convert to? It's based on Allah knows best, but nobody can give me answers. Islam has no answers. And the more you read about it, the more you get confused. The more you ask questions, the more you get answers like this. Allah knows best what he means by those letters. This is cannot be God. God don't send his books or his words to confuse us. He sent to guide us. And the funny, the Quran says that Allah, he sent the book with the clear details. Great details. Where is the details? We have thousands of books to, to explain the Quran. But none of them can explain the Quran and all of them end and start with Allah knows best. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And I mean to that. See you soon again. Bye-bye.